Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In the last lesson, lesson 50, we took a look at the model-driven approach to enterprise architecture, one of the two kind of a traditional approaches to EA. In this lesson, number 51, we'll take a look at the second traditional approach, the initiative-driven approach to EA. Now, in the initiative-driven approach, what we really start out with is what we want to do. Do you remember in Lesson 50, the model-driven approach, when I explained that, we really start out with modeling. But in this case, it really starts out with an initiative. What do we want to do? We want to accomplish something. When we do that, that then kicks off enterprise architecture modeling to say, well, I see that you would want to become the number one online insurance company in the nation. So that was what you would like to do. Well, the next step does the modeling. We ask, well, what do we currently have? And from there, now we define a roadmap about how do we get there. And of course, like the model-driven approach, in the initiative-driven approach, now we actually do the enterprise communication to say, what's our progress? However, isn't it interesting, in the model-driven approach that we saw in Lesson 50, and there was a feedback or a line linking all the way back to saying, what do we currently have? Because every time we accomplish something, it changes what we have because we do that model first or model driven approach. But here, we don't have that feedback loop going back. We don't update anything because it's all driven off of initiatives. As a matter of fact, if we analyze the initiative driven approach, I like to kind of call this on demand modeling. So from a modeling approach, we don't do anything with modeling the enterprise until we actually have to do something. And as a matter of fact, because of that, this is usually a faster approach than what we saw in the last lesson, the model-driven approach, because we don't spend so much time modeling. As a matter of fact, if the initiative is scoped just to a particular department or a division or a set of systems, that's the only thing we model. And the other advantage is that all these initiatives, well, actually, I shouldn't say that's an advantage, <laughs> but the other implication uh, is that all initiatives are really top down and come from the business. It's kind of a, a um, I would say it's actually sort of a negative. We saw with the model driven approach and that because we're modeling everything all the time, that we can start identifying some of the problems and inefficiencies. But here we don't do anything until there's actually an initiative. So generally those initiatives are top down. And another issue here associated with the initiative driven approach is that reusing those models and synchronizing models between teams can be a real challenge. So because this is on demand modeling, I may have an initiative where I'm modeling a portion of the enterprise and there might be another enterprise architect working on another initiative that is also modeling the enterprise. And that synchronization of those models or reusing models so that we're not repeating ourselves is a big challenge here. And finally, unlike the model-driven approach, the initiative-driven approach really doesn't do that comprehensive modeling. And therefore, that complete picture of the enterprise really isn't known at any given time. However, I would argue that with the model-driven approach, it's really never known anyway, because once you hit save on a particular model, it's really obsolete because things change too rapidly. Now with the model driven approach that we saw in the last lesson, we saw that when we do that kind of modeling, the Zachman framework from John Zachman from IBM really fit well with that. It's a very comprehensive modeling kind of prescriptive approach. However, that does not work here. When we start talking about how initiative approach is done, this usually is where TOGAF comes in. TOGAF standing for the Open Group Architecture Framework. Let me show you a little bit about how TOGAF works in conjunction with this initiative-driven approach. You see, it works really well with this traditional approach of architecture because it kind of starts with business drivers and goals. And it ends with additional business capabilities. I really, I really like this, this diagramming. Uh, this is an actual TOGAF artifact because it means when we want to do something, we generate capabilities. And the neat thing is we're not doing anything until we have a business driver or goal, which usually helps with that alignment between those business needs and business capabilities that we saw in Lesson 49. 
Now, central to TOGAF is what used to be in the old days, uh, TOGAF, but now it's more comprehensive. And this is, this is called the ADM. And the ADM stands for the Architecture Development Method. And the point is here, think of this as an engine. And it's sitting there idle. The car's parked. Now we get a business initiative. There's some sort of business need. This actually starts that engine. And now the car's running. And we go through the whole ADM process, which actually then creates business solutions, which then provides those capabilities. All of the artifacts in TOGAF that we produce, and this is again that initiative-driven approach, that modeling is saved for potential reuse and leverage with the ACF, the Architecture Content Framework. And then, of course, within the TOGAF, we have that another ACF, the Architecture Capability Framework. This is more that project management level, which then feeds back a whole loop through the enterprise continuum and all the reference models that leverage the building blocks and the reuse. And as a matter of fact, central to this really is that architecture development methodology, the ADM, which has phases A through H, which allows us to kind of iteratively go through to find those solutions. So you can kind of see the difference between the model-driven and the initiative-driven approach. Now in the next lesson, what we're going to do is tie all these together because what we're going to see is why these traditional approaches that I've just showed you in last week's lesson and in this week's lesson, both the model-driven and initiative-driven, really no longer work in today's world. And what I'm going to do is show you why those don't work and actually offer up three new modern approaches to enterprise architecture. And so you can find that certainly on Software Architecture Monday and also uh, where I'm speaking, either at public events or online uh, training or conferences by going to my website, Upcoming Events. And so this has been Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 51, the Initiative Driven Approach to EA. We're going to wrap all this up in Enterprise Architecture in Lesson 52 and really talk about why the two approaches that we've just discussed really don't work anymore and look at some modern approaches to enterprise architecture. So stay tuned next Monday for the wrap up of all the enterprise architecture kind of things about the overall approaches to EA.